Magandang magandang araw sa inyong lahat at welcome sa isa na namang informative at educational video kung saan ay tutulungan ko kayo na mas maintindihan ang mga concepts ng nursing at midwifery. Kaya kung ikaw ay isang nursing or midwifery student o di kaya isang registered healthcare professional ka na pero mas gusto mong paigtingin pa ang iyong nalalaman sa profesyong na pili mo, aba, nasa tamang channel ka. Ako nga po pala si Teacher Jeff Lay, isang registered midwife at registered nurse at clinical nurse educator at ako ang magsisilbing lecturer at clinical instructor nyo sa topic na 10 common childhood illnesses. Tara, simulan na natin. Another contagious disease that can be experienced by our pediatric patient is what we call mumps or beke in Tagalog. Okay? So ano nga ba yung mumps or beke? Mumps is a contagious viral infection that affects the salivary gland, causing them to swell and become painful. So, ang natitamaan po sa ating mumps is your parotid gland or what we call the salivary gland. So, maaaring ito po yung mag-infect because of the presence of the virus at pwede po itong mamaga and it will become very painful to our patients. Masakit po ang magkaroon ng beke or mumps. Now, what is the causative agent for mumps? It is the same as your measles. The mumps virus is a paramyxovirus din like your measles. So again, virus po yung nagkukos ng, uh, ng mumps at measles, hindi po bacteria. Lagi pong tatandaan na virus po ang nagkukos ng mumps and measles. And they are the paramyxovirus. Now, paano natin malalaman if our patients have mumps, kung mumps nga talaga yun, and not just another form of uh, swelling. Okay? So, yung mumps po, they typically causes swelling and pain in the parotid gland. So, masakit po dito, okay? Which are located on either side of the face near the ear. So, dito po, sumasakit sa ating mga pasyente. It can be bilateral or unilateral. Maaaring isa lang yung masakit or maaaring dalawa ang masakit po sa kanila. So that is your mumps. Meron siyang swelling dito and pain on the parotid gland that is located on either side of the face near the ears. Aside from that, there are also other symptoms that accompany mumps. Ano yung mga yon? Number one dyan, yung fever. Meron siyang lagnat. Along with the presence of headache, muscle aches, fatigue, and even loss of appetite. So, yung pasyente po natin, no, marami siyang nararamdamang sakit. Bakit? Kasi aside from masakit po dito niya sa may pisngi, okay, near the, uh, on the face, near the ears, meron din po siyang lagnat, sumasakit din po yung kanyang ulo, masakit din po yung kanyang kasukasuan at mga laman, and there is also fatigue of feeling of tiredness and exhaustion, and wala din po siyang ganang Kumain. So, those are your signs and symptoms that accompany your mumps. Pero, ano nga ba yung kanyang pathognomonic sign or paano natin masasabi talaga na, ah, mumps talaga ito. Now, the pathognomonic sign for mumps or the characteristic symptoms for it is a swollen and painful parotid gland. So, pag yung pasyente po natin ay nagswell na dito, that is already the pathognomonic sign of your mumps, maaari na pong mag-start si doctor ng treatment once na nakita na niya po na talagang meron siyang pag-swelling dito of the parotid gland, so maaaring mumps na po talaga yon. The swelling usually begins on one side, like I said, unilateral, and then it may also spread to the other side, making the swelling and pain bilateral. Sino-sino nga ba yung mga pwedeng magkaroon ng mumps? Now, there are predisposing factors that are linked with the mumps, okay? So, yung mumps po, it can affect anyone who has not been vaccinated or previously had the disease. Kung ikaw ay, so kung ikaw ay hindi pa nagkaroon ng beke or ikaw ay hindi pa nabakunahan against mumps, maaari pong magkaroon ka ng mumps if you come in contact with an infected patient. However, children between the ages of 5 and 9 are most commonly affected. Pinakamadami po tayong cases ng mumps ay nag ukur between 5 and and 9 years of age. Now, paano natin malalaman or paano natin mako-confirm kung yung pasyente ay may beke or mumps? 
Diagnosis of mumps is usually based on the clinical symptoms. Like I said, titignan natin yung mga complaints ng ating patient and if it ticks all the boxes, specifically kung meron siyang swelling on the face near the ear, maaari pong mumps na po yung ating patient. Okay? So a presence of swollen and painful parotid gland can already confirm that the patient has mumps or we can also do a blood test or a saliva test which may be used to confirm the diagnosis of the presence of mumps. So like I said, pag IgM po ang nagpositive, ibig sabihin po, the patient had a recent infection of mumps or maaaring meron siyang current or active infection on mumps. So yun po yung pwede nating tignan sa ating blood test or saliva test. The presence of IgM, ibig sabihin positive po yung patient natin with mumps. Pero pag IgG naman po yung nag-positive, ibig sabihin that is already a past or a previous infection, ibig sabihin hindi po mumps yung meron sa pasyente kasi meron na siyang antibody against mumps. Therefore, having that disease is Technically, very impossible kasi meron siyang pananggalang na mga IgM against the paramyxo virus. Now, how does the mumps virus spread from one person to another? The mode of transmission of the mumps is that mumps virus replicates in the upper respiratory tract. So dito po sa upper respiratory tract, nagpapadami daw yung ating paramyxo virus that causes mumps. Okay? And it is transmitted from one person to another through direct contact with their saliva or respiratory droplets. Okay, specifically, pag sila ay infected with mumps, maaari pong if we came in contact with their saliva or we came in contact with uh, their respiratory secretions or pharyngeal secretions, maaari pong magkaroon tayo din ng beke kapag hindi pa tayo nabakunahan or hindi pa tayo nagkaroon ng mumps previously. So, paano nga ba natin iti-treat ang mumps? What are our treatment options and nursing responsibilities when we are taking care of patients with mumps? Lagi niyong tatandaan na gaya ng chicken pox at measles, ang mumps, there is no specific treatment for it but is supportive in nature or palliative. Again, irerepeat ko po yung concept na treating the signs and symptoms as they come. Ibig sabihin, ang focus po natin as nurses is to relieve the patient's symptoms. So, lagi yung tatandaan, pag meron siyang headache, pwede po tayong magbigay ng paracetamol, acetaminophen, or ibuprofen. Specifically, pag meron pang joint pains, pwede din po tayong magbigay non. Or, pag meron siyang swollen parotid glands, based on the doctor's order, pwede po siyang magbigay ng anti-inflammatories. Or pag meron siyang loss of appetite or nausea, maaari pong i-adjust natin yung mga feeding, uh, feeding schedules natin sa ating mga pasyente. Lagi yung tatandaan na pag yung pasyente po ay may loss of appetite or no, meron siyang nausea or naduduwal-duwal, as much as possible is that we give them small frequent feedings. Hindi po dapat sila merong mga uh, big meals or mga full meals dahil po iduduwal nila at maaari po silang mag-vomit. At pag yung pasyente, lagi nating pinipilit na kumain ng marami, eh wala nga siyang ganang kumain because of his loss of appetite, mas mangyayari po ay hindi yan kakain. Pero if we allow the patient to take 2 to 3 tablespoons of food and then i-increase na lang natin yung frequency ng kanyang pagsubo. For example, every hour susubuan mo siya or every 2 to two, 2 hours susubuhan mo siya ng 2 to 3 tablespoons of food. That is what we call now small frequent feeding. So that can now relieve your loss of appetite, makakakuha pa rin siya ng proper nutrition, and also prevent nausea or pagduduwal-duwal. Again, pag meron siyang fever, we can give our patient paracetamol based on the doctor's order. And if their patient has dry mouth then we can encourage the patient to increase oral fluid intake. So yun po yung mga pwede nating ibigay sa ating mga pasyente na mga relief of symptoms. This can include rest. So ma'am or sir, patulugin nyo po muna yung mga bata. Huwag nyo pa munang kalaruin. So that's one. Or we can also give fluids and pain-relieving medications. 
Pero in severe cases po, baka kailanganin pong ma-hospital ng pasyente because the patient might be needed to be given antiviral medications. But that is only for severe instances. Now, ano yung mga nursing responsibilities natin? We have to remember that we can prevent the spread of mumps by educating our patients and their families on infection control measures. Ano nga ba yung gagawin natin? Turuan natin sila how to properly wash their hands after they uh, come in contact with the soiled articles of the patients and also respiratory etiquette. Turuan po natin not just our patient but also our significant others and their watchers na pag sila ay babahing, hindi po dapat sa kamay but on the uh, on the elbows. Aside from that, gagamit sila ng masks or both parties gagamit ng mask, the patient and the uh, the watcher. And kapag gumamit po sila ng mga tissues uh, na pagsinga or pag-blow ng kanilang mga nose, it should be discarded on its proper receptacle. Aside from that, we can also monitor and manage the symptoms of our patients. And then pag nagko-complain sila ng increasing pain, we can refer them to the doctor so that proper medications can be given. Again, ang focus po natin is the relief of symptoms. Kaya po, i-monitor natin yung not just the vital signs of our patients but also their pain. Aside from that, we can give emotional support to our patients and their families. And then... We can also allow them or encourage them to do vaccination. Napaka-importante po ng bakuna. Okay? That is part of our uh, responsibilities to protect not just ourselves but also to the whole community. At dyan na po nagtatapos ang ating lecture regarding mumps. Sana po ay marami kayong natutunan sa akin. And you can support my channel by liking subscribing and sharing my contents to the people you know who can benefit from this information. Again, ako po si Teacher Jeff Lay at nag-iiwan ako sa inyo ng God bless, keep safe, and enjoy the rest of the day.